All right, I'm here with my buddy Nami. Nami is a super duper smart uh, um, uh, Australian shepherd. And uh, basically in this video, we're gonna go over some tips you can use if you have a dog like Nami who is demanding that guests play with her. Now, Nami is not an aggressive dog, but uh, she does have some eye contact issues. So eventually I would like you to do the focus exercise that I showed you. And you might brush up on that yourself before your guests come over. Now, um, when I have dogs that have behavior problems, I cheat. I don't cheat, but I, I do what we call stage setups. I want to give the dog every advantage that I possibly can ahead of time. Fetch. Yes, that's going to be something we're going to talk about here in a sec. Okay, so if we have guests that are coming over, so the first thing I would do is I'd make sure that you set her up for success by taking her out and getting her an appropriate, yeah, let's not bark right now, uh, an appropriate, yes, amount of exercise. So I would have you go do this by just taking her outside, and I'm just going to use this sit. I would take her outside and uh, and like maybe take her for 15 minutes sniff walk. Sniffing burns more energy than just walking. And then come back in and after exercise, she needs 10 minutes to recover before any of the next thing happens. Otherwise, she'll be worse behaved. So you take her out for, your friend texts you, hey, I'm on my way over, I'll be in there in 25 minutes. Take her out for a 10 minute sniff walk and then uh, give her 10 minutes of rest. Then your guest is gonna meet her outside. Now, if it turns out that 10 minutes or 20 minutes or whatever it was, next time do 25 minutes ebb and flow, but don't do too much. A lot of people make the mistake of doing too much exercise, then the dog's overly tired and cranky. So then what we did is I met outside. Now I would have you guys do this at times when there's nobody out there. Um, now, normally I like to set it up so the dog can't see me when it comes out the door. We're in an apartment, so we don't have that luxury. Uh, but basically I left a treat trail and I started off with the Charlie Bears and then I went to the Tricky Trainers. Um, and at first the treats are, you know, first couple are about six inches apart and then they become about two or three feet apart. Try to make them a straight line. It's easier for them to recognize that pattern. And she really got every treat. She was really into it. And then I uh, have the person sitting in the street. So the dog is approaching from like the five o'clock or the seven o'clock angle. And when she approached, I had treats in my hand. I don't want to go digging and moving around. I want to be sitting. And when she comes up, I just going to hold a treat out to my side. I'm not looking at her. I'm not trying to pet her. I'm not talking to her. And then she came over and did just that. She came over and took a treat. Offer another one. After about three treats, then I said, sit. Yes. And she sat. Now, when I'm going to stand up, standing up can be jarring for a lot of dogs. So I, I might go like this and then release the treat. So I'm holding the treat or I might give her a treat and stand up. For a lot of dogs, when, they stand, when we stand up, that's comfort, uh, confrontational. Also, for dogs, front facing is, uh, is confrontational. Leaning over a dog can be dominating. Now, she's looking for a treat. Let's see, show her I don't have treats. See how she backed away there? That, that was, and she's disagreeing right there. She, that was a very rude interaction. I know, I just have to do a demonstration so nobody else does that for you. Sit? Yes. And so, um, what I, uh, so we tell your guests, make sure you don't, uh, and try not to uh, look her in the eyes directly. I know that sounds you know, like, oh God, your dog's so high maintenance. Uh, that's why the focus will help. Um, and eventually, do here, once you talk to somebody a times, I think she'll be fine. Come here. Now, if I give her a treat, then that's going to reward that. So I asked her to sit, touch, yes, and then I'm going to uh, down, up, up, touch. So I want to have a clip, uh, a period of time before I give her a treat. Now I'm just going to let her nibble on this treat, and I'm going to keep her from barking while I'm doing this. Um, so basically, uh, the, uh, tell the person just, you know, try to avoid direct eye contact. Don't stand uh, uh, sudden movements and don't try to pet her. And if you do pet her, she prefers to be petted under her chin. But right now, let's just kind of, I'm just going to have you give her a treat, stand up, then take a little mini walk up the hill like we did. And every once in a while, every couple of stops, have them, uh, uh, give them a bunch of treats. Give them a treat pouch like this so you can load it up so they don't have to hold a bunch. And then every couple of steps, now we sit. Yes. Say yes, and then give her a treat. Take a couple more steps. Ask them for do it down and have them do a couple find it. I would probably, since she really likes the ball, um, I usually don't like retractable leashes, but in this case, I might get a retractable leash and have go outside with the ball since she really likes the ball. Play fetch five times, 10 times out there. Mm -hmm. She really likes that activity too. Just make sure she doesn't have an empty, uh, a full stomach. It's dangerous for dogs to run around with a full stomach. Um, and then after that, so you come back in, and sometimes what I try to do is I try to get the leash to the person. And the person's now holding the leash, sit, yes. And if she doesn't sit, that's her way of saying, I don't feel comfortable with this person. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's the case, then I would probably have, stay outside and have the person do more find it's or different things along those lines so that she kind of interacts with them. Sit. Another game that I really like doing with guests are catch. It's a great game that the dog can keep whatever distance she feels comfortable with. So you might do that outside as well. Now, as we're coming inside and walking through the hallway, every couple steps I'm saying sit, 
Doesn't sit, that's okay. Touch, yes. And then so probably uh, the sits, and you could also do a little hand targeting outside. I would have the guardians doing this first back and forth and guest watches, have the guest the amicable. After they get, just, this is so much fun, do you want me to show you how to do it? Of course, I'm a guest, I want to learn how to do that. And then the guest touch, yes. And then they put a treat on the hand, and Naomi gets it, and then she goes to her mom or dad or whatever it is. So anyways, you're kind of asking her to do a couple things, and so if she's listening to the guest, she's giving the indication she feels pretty comfortable. At the same time, you're gonna be watching her body language, looking for those cutoff signals and things I mentioned to you earlier, and reiterate to the guest multiple times. We're not gonna pet her at all until we get in the apartment, so just avoid petting her. Uh, and uh, when we do do that, uh, before you start petting, I want them to be able to go, Nami, touch, yes, sit, yes. And then I can reach down and give her a pet. If she's giving some cutoff signals, one of the things that you can do is get a treat, these are tricky trainers, um, and I smash it, and like for dogs that are only being touched, I'm getting my I'm just getting her used to my hand approaching. And then when the treat's gone, the hand stops. And then I can do that again. Now I can go a little bit closer and I'm making a light contact. She's, she, when she stops, I stop. And eventually then I go like this. Can get one out. Touch, pet, treat. So we call it a precedent. So we want, uh, we start off with offering the treat here to keep her occupied and make her feel good about it. And you don't have to do the, the chop. Now we do it, don't make it a big sudden chop. Just I'm moving partially, my hand partially towards her and then pulling away if she's offering cutoff signals. So she's saying, I'm uncomfortable with the hand approaching, so I'm gonna make it easier. That's probably an extreme that you don't need, but I threw it in there just in case. Now eventually what I wanna do is I wanna uh, touch her, then give her the treat. So the pet means I'm gonna get a treat. And having people give her a liberal amount of treats, probably pretty smart. Um, so we've exercised her ahead of time. Uh, we gave her the 10 minutes of rest. We went outside and met outside. We played a little fetch. We did some asked for some sits. We walked back inside. Right outside the door, have her sit, yes, treat. As soon as you step inside, yes, treat. And these are from the guest. And then the guest takes one step in, yes, treat. And if she's a little bit nervous, sometimes I'll do something like, uh, come here, Nani. Come here, over here. So I might actually have the guests like holding a treat as they walk in, or if you're worried about her nipping, I would go show a treat, take a step, yes. Pull a treat, step, yes. So the step comes first and it's followed by a treat. So she's like, can we get this guest walking around? Because every step I get a treat. Mm -hmm. Eventually it can be two steps and get a treat, three steps and get a treat. Um, now when you come inside, um, for dogs, uh, this is where I'd want to do a little bit of the eye contact. Yes, and now you, there we go. So can we sit? You'll see right there, she was breathing a little heavy. Now this is again, a close to an end of a three hour session. So come here, sit. And I would have you guys do this exercise first. And again, this is guests who are gonna listen. The guests who don't listen, you can skip this one. Yes. So you do this four or five times. After you guys have done it yourselves and she really is good at it, she's just gonna look up right away. Then your guests can come in and do this a little bit. Uh, if she has eye contact issues, this is what I would do with each guest. And eventually you get to the point where she's like, I like staring at those, guests, or those guests looking me in, in the eyes because that means I'm about to get a treat. Now, um, there's other things we can do. These are bully sticks. There's also cow ears, pig snouts, cow snouts. Um, there is uh, pig hooves. Uh, there's oxtail. Uh, kneecaps are one of my dog's favorites. Um, and there's collagen sticks, tendons. And so edible sort of items, licking and chewing release the feel good endorphins. So every time a guest come in, I would have one or two of those things ready to go. So if she comes in and uh, they touch. So when she comes in, I wouldn't do the eye contact thing right away. I would probably work towards that towards the end of it. But when they come in, maybe you guys play the game of hand targeting. You're there, you're there, and the guest is here. And also have the guest not move stuff around at first. Uh, and so now she's interacting. If, she won't, if they go touch and she doesn't come to them, she's saying, I'm not at that point yet. Now we're also gonna remember looking at her body language. If she's facing the guest, she's saying, I don't trust that guest fully yet. If she won't sit near the guest, I'm saying I'm not fully comfortable with the guest. And that's okay, we'll get her there. Now the guest, if the guest is playing these games with her, the hand, and first you guys do hand target yourselves three or four times, then you have the guest to it. Now she's approaching the guest, and now at some point she'll probably go over and touch their nose her nose to her, and then she's, and then, yes, she understands that, yes, this guest can give me, is the one who gives the treats, and a lot of times I like to make the guest the only person who's giving the treats, so she's like, 
Because otherwise she goes, she knows you guys, but now she's like, okay, I'm gonna go to the guest. I'm in. Now if she starts growling at the guest. I ask for a stop gap measure. So she growls at me. Let's see if we can get a growl. growl. So that you saw, I gave her a direct stare. I stopped talking and staring for longer than five seconds is typically rude in the dog world. That's a grumble. And so if she goes from an open mouth to a closed mouth, we talked about the cutoff signals. If her ears rotate back, if uh, she like stares at them with hard eyes, <laughs> blinking eyes. So this is where I just want attention. So now I'm gonna say, this is a great example. Sit, yes. Touch, yes. Down, yes. Touch, yes. So there I asked for uh, several things before I gave her a treat. Now you don't want to have that too long. I wanted to eclipse, eclipse the two seconds between her doing that behavior. But if she gets down and I give her a treat or pet her, then she thinks that's a chain behavior. I jump up on a guest, then I sit down, then I give a treat. Now, um, now this, if I give her a treat now, I could be rewarding this, but I could, if she's gonna be barking or doing something, I can smash that treat and I gotta hold it, give her the ability to get a little bit of it and keep her occupied. Another thing that I like to do is I call it snag. So, well, where's your toy that you were like earlier? <laughs> so, t if your dog has something in their mouth, they can't bark. So, uh, the cue comes before the dog does the action. So, I can say, snag, yes. So, what I do is when you get your next bark box, before the first time you pull the tree up, take the tag off and then throw it on the ground, and right before she gets it, say snag. So, snag means pick an item up. And if you have an item that has a squeaker, she can squeak to articulate her bark without the actual bark. Now that works, and then keep one of those toys away that you can only do this game with. So snag means go grab something. So if she does this, uh, you can tell her to snag something and she can either walk around squeaking it or just picking it up and now she's got something. Now guests, she likes to play sit, uh, fetch, so come here, sit. So I ask for a sit first. I say fetch as I throw it. I'm gonna have a treat ready. And I'm not going to say the marker word until she brings it back to me. No, this is go fetch, fetch, fetch. So for you guys, you guys had kind of interrupted her fetch the mm -hmm. way that we talked about off camera. So make sure you say fetch as you throw it. When she brings it back to you, hold the treat out. And as soon as she drops it, say yes, and then give it to her. Now she also was liking to, uh, she was trying to snatch it before I do it. So that's the case when she drop, drop, or she drops it, I reach very slowly. As she gets up, I ask her to sit again, that pre-mac principle we talked about earlier. She sits, when I say fetch and throw it, she goes and gets it. Now, having your guests play fetch with her is great. Something else you guys might wanna consider is getting an eye fetch. An eye fetch is a machine that lets the dog play fetch with itself. Mm -hmm. So you could tell her that cue and then she starts playing fetch and burning her and her own energy while you come converse with your guests. Now, we also talked about doing a little set games. And so I'm gonna to try to do a couple of these real quick while she's not paying attention and what is it? Find it. Find it. Find it. Find it. Yes. Yes. Now you're going to watch. You can keep the camera on her. Find it. She's going to look around for these treats. This is a nice game that either you can do if your guest doesn't want to participate. You can just hide these treats around. Or you can have the guest do it. A lot of guests like doing that sort of mm -hmm. thing. Um, the other thing I like to do is sit, catch, yes. Try to say yes only when she catches it. But if she's uncomfortable with your guest, if you can have her further away, or if she gets a, whatever distance she feels comfortable with, and the guest can play fetch, and I would do this with kibble or a low value treat, as high a value as you need to go, as low a value as you can get away with, but as high as value as you need to. Uh, so a couple of games of uh, find it, you know, especially if there's like 10 or 15 treats around, take her in the bathroom, stay, and then you hide all these things, or have it pre-lit hidden before, if you know the guest is gonna be problematic, have these things hidden with low value treats that don't stink very well. And when she gets like this, you guys can say, find it, and just like, find it. And you're gonna watch, she's sniffing her ground. Sniffing drains a tremendous amount of energy. And it gives her something else to do. Now, licking and chewing also, you can bring it back to me, licking and chewing also uh, release the feel good endorphins, so prolactin, um, uh, I always forget these one. Uh, Prolactin, oxytocin, I can't remember the last one. Uh, but basically, those are things that make the dog feel good, similar to when the mother's breastfeed. So I would have a couple of chew items. Chew is also a way to release tension. So I would have maybe a bully stick or a collagen stick or a kneecap or something like that that's new and fresh. Have the guests give it to her. She goes and chews that one. That's going to keep her occupied for a while. And then afterwards, we can do the, you know, so you can do it whatever order, the, fi the find it game when she, you know. And the key is you, wanna, you don't want to wait for her to jump up like she was demonstrating earlier. 
she was giving some indications earlier. She's kind of nudging, kind of, you know, and some indicators that she wanted to play. So then we give her one of those things to do, and maybe we do the set games five or six times. Now remember, start saving those little boxes that you can have, and then set them up in a couple corners. So you don't just all have one box. So one bo a box set over there, one over there, maybe one in the bedroom, and then you can hide those trees. Now cut the strips of uh, paper, like one inch wide by about that long, and fill it up so it's kind of like doggy confetti, as I call it. And then we can put some treats in there. She's got to look through all of that stuff to find those treats, and if they're not super stinky, that's more problem solving. So if you do, like, if you do 25 treats, do that five times, that's like a hundred treats and she's sniffing around and at the same time leaving her around the place, she's probably gonna be pretty pooped. Last thing is make sure on that last thing, but make sure you keep those visits shorter to begin with. Um, after a while, um, she's gonna get overly tired and this is a disruption to your normal routine. Now, if that's the case, gradually work your way up, but I would probably start a timer when your guests come over and when she starts doing that, mark it down, keep a little journal and write that stuff down so you start seeing, you know what, first visit, like the maximum length of time is before she, or the minimum length of time before she does it is like 17 minutes. So I might have the guest come over and have the guest leave before that. So the guest leaves at 15 minutes. Do that once or twice, then we go to 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Gradually lengthen that. But again, by creating all these enrichment activities, Omega Paw Tree Ball. Omega Paw Tricky Trainer Tree Ball is another way that they can do it. Um, another thing you can do, and I'll give you one of these that uh, I was gonna give you earlier, now this is a shorter one, so it's not ideal. You want to get a longer one. This is a collagen stick from our buddies over at Barkworthy's that they give me to give out, so I give them a little shout out. Um, Barkworthy's is also known as Best Bully, which is, this is the retail version, this is the version you buy at the store. So sit. Now if I hold it, it's mine. If I give it to her, it's hers. Now it's ours. So if you have a long one and she's sitting there chewing it, now she's chewing. As long, now, don't do this if your dog has any guarding issues. She does not have any guarding issues, so I feel comfortable with her. But it'd be nicer if this is this is a four inch, if we had like a six inch or eight inch or 12 inch one. So now the, the guest is holding on to it. She's now she's pulling on it because I think she wants it her, to herself. And that's fine, I can eventually let it go. But a lot of times, she, when she, uh, we'll see if she starts, a lot of dogs figure out I'm not gonna get it. And so they'll just start chewing on it while, she's, while I'm holding it. There we go. And so now she's, you know, and she's a problem solver. Now don't let her pull them away. So if that's the case, then I might hold it, uh, I might just have the guest give it to her. But now she's actually doing the chewing on it. Yeah. And that's what we want. So now she's chewing on it while the guest is holding on to it. The guest is not comfortable with this. The guest is, and that's exactly what I was saying. So now she's actually chewing. She recognized I'm not gonna let it go. If your guest is gonna not be strong enough to hold it, they do make little clips or things you can hold on to the bully sticks mm -hmm. with, or I've seen people put vice grips onto them. Now these are tougher than uh, the bully sticks. Bully sticks are more malleable. Um, but after a while, then uh, now she's chewing and she's got, uh, so, so we can show it here. If you, if you can zoom in on her eyes. She's giving us what we call sleepy eyes. Sleepy eyes are the kind of those half squinty eyes. And so if she's starting to give her those things, that's uh, she's feeling really good about it. And then she gets to a certain amount of chewing and the guest is done with it. Sit, yes, give it to her. She's gonna go chew it wherever she feels comfortable. Now remember for you, your indicators of how comfortable she is, it, right now if you will go down, she, so if you see she's orientated facing me, her nose is pointed at me. That says that she's not, uh, she, she's not fully, tr I would say not trusting, but just, I'm not, I'm not fully comfortable with you. I'm comfortable, but not completely comfortable. When dogs go sideways, that means they're much more comfortable. So now she feels better and more relaxed. So she doesn't have to be pointing her nose at the threat. And she's, she's preoccupied, she's enjoying herself, having a good experience, and releasing those feel-good endorphins. I would have one of these, and I would have a lick mat. Now the lick mat, the guardians use, but they only used it when they were giving her a bath, and that can make it into a poison pill. So what we wanna do is have that lick mat out with peanut butter or cream cheese on it, and if she doesn't like that, you can use some of the uh, Stewart's freeze-dried beef or you can just grind or smash it down and put the dust on top of it. Now she's licking that. The nice thing about that is you can put suction cups. So she can only have it there or there, wherever you want her to have it, so you can have a little bit of distance. Um, but the idea is to create positive associations. Now if you do have a house guest or somebody that's coming to stay with her, I would again meet outside. I mean a lot of times what I do is I have the house guest meet the dog three times outside before they come in the house. Okay. So maybe have the house guest meet us at the dog park. And then uh, the, they play a little fetch and have a good experience. Then you leave separate of the guest and maybe one of you goes with the guest to have lunch and the other one brings her home. 
And then when you get home, then you take her out for a walk. And maybe two blocks away from her, after the guest gets done with lunch, you meet on a walk and you do a little bit of walking together. Then you separate, you come back in, and then maybe the third time you meet outside like I described earlier. So that really can set her up over the course of maybe an hour and a half, two hours, because you have lunch in between. She gets a reset. I don't really think that there's a big dynamic change in dogs when they like experience something and they sleep for the, in terms of going into their memory banks. So if that's the case and she's at the dog park, she's having a good time there, when she comes back home, she's gonna sleep. That's gonna go into her longer term memory. Then she goes and he's like, oh my God, you're, dude, you're here too? And now you're giving me these really amazing treats that my humans give me? Boy, boy, you're a pretty awesome person. And then, we, and then they go away, and then again, come inside, reset. Uh, and it gets not super convenient, so it's as best if you have a guest that can do a couple things. Um, if you have coming, somebody come and visit you, maybe one of you goes and has a drink with, and the other one stays here for a little bit. But that's a nice little rhythm that she gets by the time she actually meets the guest. I've met the person, I've slept on him, I met him again, and then I met him a third time, and now they're dropping treats and asking me to do stuff. Probably can get to that best friend, uh, uh, ride, ride or die, uh, met that uh, or, uh, mentality that you guys want um, a little bit quicker. Uh, now, if she does growl or anything, remember that's her way of saying I'm uncomfortable. It can mean she's uncomfortable. In her case, there's also she does it as a demand. So now we can do something, well, I'm not going to describe it because I don't think that that's going to be appropriate. I was going to describe a negative punishment, but I think it's just going to make her more frustrated. So the idea is to catch her when she gives that first indication that she's going to do that and then ask her a couple stop gap measures, then do the fetch or do the lick mat or the collagen stick or whatever it is so that we get her out of that. We want to be preemptive and get her, a, uh, get her something else to do before she does that. Dogs have behavior patterns that take about 66 days to establish. She's been doing this for a while. So what we want to do is have like about three months of having gradually longer guest visits that she, we beat her to the punch. She doesn't ever get to the point where she's growling or doing those things because we're managing the situation. After about three months, she kind of forgets about that behavior and it's less likely to occur. And if it does, again, just put your finger on that scale, invite friends over first to help her practice this stuff, the friends who are gonna to listen to you. And after she's practiced it enough times, then you can have the friends come over that don't listen and then they can actually, you can do the other stuff. And we have friends that come and visit or whatever, I have them watch this video so they can kind of be present, uh, present to all the stuff that we went over today. Um, I'm trying to think, is there anything else you want me to go over? I think that's I think that was the summary. All right. Yeah. Um, let's show her real quick. This is my buddy Nami from Tsunami. You want to make the pause of her after, see if she'll look at you? Mommy. Yes, good girl. What a hand, what a good looking girl she is. We're gonna try and now and I'm David. She's available for commercial shoots. So if you're looking to hire a, a really good looking dog, she'd be a good one. Uh, but these are some tips and tricks you can use to set your dog up for success if it doesn't always agree or enjoy having uh, guests come to visit.